If we have path like this, and let's say we want to connect these two endpoints, this one and this one, to do this, we may have several scenarios. First, we can connect these two by making a line. Or second, we want to join these two anchor points into one point. Let's discuss joining first. To join these two anchor points, first select this anchor point and hold shift, then click on this anchor point. So now they are both selected. We can see if they are selected by its solid color, while the ones who are not selected have hollow feel like this. Okay. Next, go to object menu, then path, then choose average. Choose both in here. Now, as we can see, the two anchor points now joined together and become one anchor point. Usually when I do this, I prefer shortcut because going all the way to the menu is not that convenient. We can use Ctrl Alt J to join path. Basically, in Adobe Illustrator term, this kind of joining is called average, not join. Okay, to connect two endpoints, which is basically creating line between the two, we can use several methods. First is by selecting the two anchor points just like before and then go to object menu, path, and join. Now as we can see, we have new line connecting these two points. We can also use keyboard shortcut Control J to do this. Okay, another faster method is by clicking on this button up here in the control panel. But you should already select the two anchor points, otherwise this will not work. If you only have one anchor point selected, as we can see in here, this button become disabled. Another way of connecting two anchor points is by using the pen tool. You might be asking why we should use the pen tool. Because when drawing complex shape, most of the time we use the pen tool. And while the pen tool is active, it is more convenient to use it to connect anchor points, so you don't need to select the end anchor points one by one first. So how we can do this? It is very simple. We can go to the pen tool and click in here, and then click in here. That's it. Notice Illustrator automatically snap into those anchor points and connect them like so. If we have an anchor point and we want to cut it, meaning we want to separate it from one point into two points, we can use the cut command in the control panel. To do this, first select an anchor point and then click this cut button up here. Now it looks like nothing has happened, but notice as I drag this anchor point, we actually have two points in one place. The next thing we're going to discuss is erasing or removing curve or point. There are a lot of methods to do this. First, using the simple delete key button on the keyboard. If you select an anchor point and press delete button, we have something like this. Basically, the anchor point will be gone and the resulting path become an open path. Okay, now what if we want to delete curve or line only, not anchor points? Well, we can click and drag like this to select only the curve. Right now, the curve in here is actually selected. Then we can hit the delete button. Now the curve we select before are gone. This method is the same as before as it creates open path like this. What if we don't want to create open path like this? Can we do that? Yes, we can. To do this, we can select an anchor point and click this button up here called remove selected anchor points. As we can see, the anchor point is gone, but the overall shape is still intact, meaning Illustrator automatically connect the neighboring anchor points so the shape doesn't become an open path. In this section, we're going to talk about three different tools but falls to almost identical goal, so they are grouped together in this panel. They are Eraser Tool, Skisser Tool, and Knife Tool. The Eraser Tool, as the name implies, will erase anything it touches, as we can see in here. If you want to control the brush shape of the eraser tool, we can double click on the eraser tool and in here we can specify the angle, the roundness and the size of the brush. I rarely touch this option in here except the size of the brush. Even so, there is a faster way to control the size of the eraser brush without having to go to this dialog window. So let's cancel this one out. 
Okay, now to make the brush bigger, you can click on the closing bracket key. They are on the right side of the letter P key on the keyboard. Press it several times to set it bigger and bigger. And use the opening bracket key to make it smaller like this. Okay, now what if we want to constrain the eraser to erase only certain objects? How can we do that? Well, we can do that by first selecting the paths or shapes with the selection tool. And now when we use the eraser tool to erase, only the paths which are currently selected will be erased and other non-selected path will not get affected by it. Next is the skisser tool. This tool will cut a path in any anchor point or curve position that you like. So to see it in action, click and hold the eraser tool and choose skisser tool. Then move the mouse cursor until it is on top of a path like this and then click on it the path will be cut on that position. Notice if we go to selection tool and select this one, it's already an independent path. Something you must remember when using the skisser tool is that it only works if you click on a path. If you try to click on empty area like this, you'll get an error message. The last tool we're going to discuss in this video is the knife tool. Now this tool is not meant for open path, rather for closed path, also known as shapes. To give you a good idea of how this works, let's say we have this circle with blue color fill in here, and we have an open path that we create using the pencil tool. To use the knife tool, you must click and drag the tool. Notice, when we click drag on open path, it doesn't do anything. But when we do this on the circle, which is currently a shape or a closed path, we can cut this shape half like this. Just like the eraser tool, we can constrain the effect to certain shapes by selecting them first. So if nothing is selected, the knife tool will cut all of the shapes on its path. While if we select a shape or several shapes first, it will be constrained to affect those shapes only.